When you're working your beehives, it's always good to try to avoid smashing bees. If you smash a few bees, it's not going to be critical to the life of the hive. After all, the hive will make and lose a thousand bees a day, especially during the midst of a nectar flow when the queen is laying at full capacity. But there are downsides to smashing bees. Besides losing a couple bees, every time you smash a bee, it gives off a pheromone scent that triggers an alarm for the other bees around. So when you smash bees, and if you accidentally do something that will smash a bunch of bees, you will see your bees immediately become more defensive. This can be a particular issue for beekeepers using Layens hives. I'll show you why. In a Langstroth hive, with which most beekeepers are familiar, the frames have a gap at the top. The vertical bars stick out a little farther at the edge, and so when you put two frames together, they touch at that point, but there's a gap in between. And that gap is necessary for keeping in a Langstroth hive because it's a vertical hive. You have your brood chambers on the bottom, and then you're going to put honey supers on top of that. And the bees necessarily need to be able to move vertically between boxes. But the Layens hive is a horizontal hive. You're not stacking vertical boxes. And the tops of the Layens frames do not have a gap. The tops of the frames instead form a ceiling over top of the bees. While on a Langstroth hive, you have these small little spots at these vertical frame pieces where you could potentially smash bees. On the Layens hive, the entire face of the top of that frame has the potential of smashing bees when you put them together. So if you keep bees in the Layens hive, how do you avoid from smashing bees when you're putting your frames together? Let me show you my techniques and maybe these will be helpful for you. This is a hive that has a pretty decent population. I've got my open area over here that has a bunch of bees just milling about. And I've got a bunch of bees up here on top of the frames. And part of that is because some of these frames are uh, imperfect frames that I went ahead and used. And there's a little opening right here where the bees can come up through. I also have my identification card here. This is my two of spades colony. And the bees seem to have tried to clean up that card and get rid of the trash. For those unfamiliar with the Layens hive, the reason besides this gap over here that they can get into this open space is that there is a gap below this follower board. They don't typically build comb over here on the roof or anything, but some say that having that knowledge that they can pass underneath gives the bees a little less swarming instinct because they don't feel quite so out of space. Hopefully I can show this fairly well up close, some of the uh, techniques that I use. I'll pull a few frames aside here, and now we can kind of play around and work with moving these frames. One thing about when you move the frames horizontally and just slide them together, which is the way a lot of people start out just putting the frames, and it seems to make sense. We just want to slide the frames together. But when you slide the frames together, there's not a lot of bees on these frames, so they may not cooperate here with my demonstration. But one thing that you'll typically see, especially where you have a high population of bees, is that when you put the frames together horizontally, when you get just a small gap in there, I got a bee here starting to poke her head up, you'll start to get bees that are immediately come up to fill that gap. But that creates an issue for the beekeeper because you have two choices. You can either push the frames together very quickly, which is going to slam those frames and agitate the bees, or if you try to slide it slowly, bees are gonna squeeze up in there, and then pretty much your only, met, only way of getting around it is to pull out your smoker and push the bees down. And if you have a full hive, that might work long enough to get one end together, then you have to smoke the other end and push the other end together. And that can work but it can become very tedious, especially if you're dealing with a very high population. So what I'll typically do, instead of sliding those horizontally, is slide the frames vertically. And what I mean by sliding them vertically is probably self-explanatory, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Instead of pushing the frames together horizontally, side by side, you slide one frame down onto the other. And what that does, as those edges meet, the bees that are on this frame are going to get pushed down. The bees that are on this frame are going to get pushed up. And you have less chance of smashing bees. Now, I will tell you, if when you are doing this, you will have some bees that are going to try to come up through that gap, 
when you have just a little gap left there. And so you do have the possibility of scissoring some bees in between those frames. Moving the frames vertically tends to work better for me than horizontal. These bees are almost being too calm and passive to really demonstrate this well. So just pretend we've got frames covered with bees here. And I would take this frame, start that frame out fairly high, and then just slide it down vertically. And as I do that, if I push the frames together, then I can kind of scrape off some of the propolis that gets built up in between those frames. As I mentioned before, sometimes that vertical movement will end up scissoring some bees and you just have trouble getting bees to keep from passing through that gap as you're moving those frames vertically. So there's another technique that I use and actually use this pretty often. This is just based on the idea that the smaller amount of space you have for the bees to get pinched, then uh, the less chance you have to smash them. So a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. I mentioned moving the frames vertically, but if you have bees that are covering that and are insistent on passing in between those frames, then what you can do is bring one of your frames in at an angle. Now you do have to have enough space in your hive to do this. So if you're dealing with a swarm trap or some other very small space, maybe a, a hive that's full of frames, then you may have to use some smoke to get bees out of the way. But if you have space to tilt one of your frames, then as you bring that frame in, one thing you can do is tilt that frame so that your contact space is basically just the edge of that frame. So I'll bring my frame in and just touch that small space. And often you can get the bees out of the way as you move those together with that very small contact space and then slide the frame up. And what that's gonna do is any bees that were on this frame are now gonna be pushed off below. Then you can pivot your frame and slide it down. So to demonstrate this on my very passive bees here, I'm almost being too cooperative, but since this is a fairly well populated hive, I was hoping that they would be a little more uh, forceful in pushing their way up. But like I said, if I were, if I had bees crawling all over this, I could pivot my frame. This frame's heavy, makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But I'd pivot my frame, touch the edges together. So just touching those top corners, then you can slide the frame up gently. When you get about to the bottom of that top part, then you can pivot it down and then push it down. Just ease it into place. It's a technique that takes a little bit of practice, but after a while it just becomes natural putting the frames in like that. And soon it'll just kind of make sense as a way to get those bees out of the way as you're putting frames into place. One other thing I'll mention is another opportunity to smash bees. Because these are deep frames, about 16 inches deep, it does take a little time lifting them out. And unless you have very stable hands, it's real easy to bump those frames against the sides. And so something I will do as I'm getting the frames out to avoid rolling bees along the sides or the edges of the hive. So just to demonstrate, if you pull straight up, you've got maybe about half an inch on each side of this frame. So as I'm lifting it up, it's almost like playing a game of operation for those who remember that kid's game of lifting that frame out without bumping the sides and rolling bees. But if you give yourself a little space in between frames, and any space is helpful, you can rotate that frame. That gives you a little bit more of a gap. The more the better. So if we can pull these frames back and pivot the frame, now you have lots of space to go ahead and lift that frame out without bumping up against sides. This is a fairly good demonstration because we do have some bees on this edge here. So I'm going to touch these edges together. The bees kind of find their way out of the way. Then I slide it up to move any of the bees that were on that edge, push them down below, let it pivot. So the bottom edge of this frame I'm holding is touching the top edge, the top corner of this next frame. Let it pivot down, 
then slide it vertically into place. So if you keep bees in the lay-ins hive and have been struggling with how to move your frames without smashing bees, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope I explained things clear enough. If you have any other techniques different from what I described, go ahead and post those in the comments below. If you like this video, I appreciate if you like this video. And if you did enjoy this video, you might also like this other video that Google has selected especially for you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.